It's November 27, 2005, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. 50 Cent, Nelly, Aerosmith, Tom Petty, and the Eagles is, is a weird lineup tonally, but it's undeniably a heavy hitting one. But it wasn't a music festival or a Super Bowl halftime show that brought this crew together today in history in 2005, but a 13 year old girl from Long Island who was about to have the bat mitzvah of a lifetime. <laughs> yes, except clearly the music policy had been decided by her parents because those are not any 13 year old girl's favourite <laughs> artists. <laughs> it's a weird bill, however you come at it, and also a very expensive bill because 50 Cent uh, is estimated to have been paid $500,000 for his performance of about four or five songs, though he did manage to work in the lyric, go shorty, it's your butt mitzvah, we're going to party like it's your butt mitzvah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he <laughs> what do you mean? Those kid. are the original lyrics of the song, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they reworked a more general version for popular release. Um, uh, apparently, Fitty, uh, according to one witness and his posse, smelt, uh, I quote, like an open bottle of Hennessy, which sort of suggests that maybe the performers weren't all 100% behind the thing that they'd been signed up to do. I, I'm uh, sure that's how I smell at most bat mitzvahs as well, to be fair. <laughs> Probably. But Aerosmith commanded even more cash for their appearance. They were actually picked up in the company jet uh, that was owned by the guy who organised this uh, bash for his daughter, David H. Brooks. Two members of Aerosmith, Stephen Tyler and Joe Perry, were flown in from Pittsburgh and they were paid uh, $2 million for their performance. They delivered a 45-minute set at 2.45 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, and at one point, Brooks himself leapt on stage with Tyler and Perry, who <laughs> apparently responded with uh, fairly good grace when their paymaster demanded that his teenage nephew should also be allowed to sit on the drums and play drums. Uh, and at another point, Tyler uh, theatrically wiped sweat off Brooks's forehead and then dried his hand with a flourish. Yeah, I mean, this is basically kind of the most egregious example of paying big name stars to come to a party that they definitely would not want to be at otherwise. Uh, but, you know, it's not unique in, in that regard. Clearly, people have big bashes, don't they, for their 60th or their 70th or their wedding. I suppose what was particularly sort of unusual about this in the public eye, and it's worth saying it is unusual, I mean... Uh, my bar mitzvah was not like this. Most bar <laughs> mitzvahs happen in like <laughs> the village hall and, you know, there's a tray of sandwiches in the disco. But what's remarkable about this was that it was for a bat mitzvah. So, yes, it was being organised by a millionaire, but for his daughter, who was only 13 years old. The man, David H. Brooks, was the CEO of DHB Industries, which was a company based in Long Island. And what they did is they manufactured body armour for the United States military, i.e. 2005, big purple patch for them, right? 9-11 mm -hmm. was good news for his company. Bulletproof vests, which they had the IP patent on, had come along at exactly the right time, and suddenly the US is at war again and buying his products en masse. That's why he has so much money. Yeah, and Brooks presided over the affair in first a leather suit and then a magenta suede biker gear covered in chains. I mean, this attracted incredulous coverage. So they all multi-million parties thrown by the mega rich do, if you think about the Ambani wedding in India recently as an example. Yeah. But also the bit more scorn than usual. You know, after all, a bat mitzvah is supposed to be a religious milestone. And although there's no specific rule against spunking $10 million on a party, it doesn't really pass the the vibe check of, you know, now you're embracing adulthood, you're embracing the rules of the religion, which obviously, yeah. you know, giving to charity, don't be proud, love, they need that mm. kind of, you know, these kinds of messages aren't really being. The more lavish the events are that I've been to, the more scorn it gets from religious sides of the family. I've spotted this. So like one of my mm. cousins for their bar mitzvah had an event at London Zoo. And I remember seeing a religious member of my family leaving, saying, we're leaving this fast to his children as they <laughs> left. Because, like, to him, the whole the whole point of the bar mitzvah is what happens in synagogue. It's not what happens at the party afterwards. The party was literally supposed to be a lunch and a glass of wine. And it has become, like a lot of these sort of super sweet 16 type scenarios, ever more lavish to compete with other children. It's just that this really took it up a notch. I mean, this was at the Rainbow Room in New York. 
let's just stop for one second and think about how cool this was for Elizabeth. She got to do that with Steven <laughs> Tyler, but it must have been super gratifying for her as a younger sibling too, because her brother had celebrated his bar mitzvah five years earlier at the Pierre Hotel in New York, which is luxury, but it's not the Rainbow Room. And his special <laughs> guests were Jessica Simpson, Mandy Moore and Barry White another odd trio mm. and it was also an incredible event for Elizabeth's <laughs> friends all of whom went home with party bags worth a thousand dollars including an iPod and a digital camera which is the epitome of like you know very dated now but amazing in 2005 yeah, yeah. reportedly <laughs> this is what did for 50 cent is that uh, his mm. people his bodyguard were, was trying to stop guests from using their free digital cameras they've been given in the gift bags to snap him this is remarkable to think about now. Like now, if a celebrity does a mad corporate gig, they know that everyone's going to know they took the money and went to Saudi Arabia or whatever. But, you know, back in 2005, 50 Cent thought he could get away with doing this guy's daughter's bat mitzvah because there wasn't going to be any photographic evidence. And then they gave everyone there a digital camera. So the photo evidence yeah. went all over the internet. Yeah, the f official photographer, Mark D. Phillips, he was thrown out and he said, at the time, I didn't even know the name of the family throwing the party. By the end of the night and in the years since, I've come to know and realise just how despicable the people involved truly were. I can't and won't blast the girl whose bat mitzvah it was, but her father definitely paid the price for his excesses. And he's not wrong about things falling apart for David H. Brooks. In 2007, he was indicted on a range of charges. He was accused used of getting his company to pay for his ex-wife's facelift uh, and using funds to pay for a $200,000 Bentley and even a $100,000 belt buckle that he was wearing on the night of this amazing event. Uh, and during an eight-month trial, spectators were basically just riveted by the testimony of everybody uh, involved that just was like uncovering Brooks's massively lavish lifestyle. His company was said to have paid him more than $6 million in personal expenses, uh, and some of that was used to pay for sex workers for his employees and a burial plot for his mother that happy coming together of different uh, commodities <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think those have different codes on the spreadsheet <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, and Brooks was altogether accused of misleading investors about the company's finances. He made $185 million personally by selling his shares where, when they were at a record high. And so that led to this massive court case. So clearly he was a piece of work. But what's interesting is that it was this event today in history, his daughter's bat mitzvah, which could have been a completely innocuous thing and completely unrelated to anything to do with his notoriety for the way he ran his company, that triggered the FCC investigation into him. It was the reporting of this event, inviting all these celebrities over, having an event that was so OTT that the New York Post recorded the bat mitzvah as mitzvah palutza, that <laughs> encouraged people to say, you know, regulators to say, who is this guy? Like, we've never heard of him. Why mm. has he got all this money? And actually looking into the trail of cash. He was sentenced in 2013 and he actually died in prison just three years later. He was 61 and he was still appealing his convictions. And because that appeal was still pending, the obligation of the full restitution of the money that he owed to his debtors was partially lifted, but not entirely lifted. His ex-wife and three grown children, his daughters Victoria and Elizabeth and his son, had to forfeit dozens of expensive watches and pieces of jewellery, a 2000 2006 Bentley and a Ferrari. And Brooks's family also owned a gleaming chromed replica of Wall Street's famed charging bull statue, which they had to give up. <laughs> Meantime, you know, this meme of celebrities being employed for big lavish parties has continued apace, hasn't it? Despite the fact that it is now all over the internet. You, mm. you hear which stars played where and how much they got paid. Paul McCartney turned up for the 70th birthday of the private equity boss, David Bonderman. Uh, Elton John played Rush Limbaugh's wedding in Palm Beach, which is extraordinary because Limbaugh made lots of controversial statements about AIDS, um, but then Elton John used his fee towards his AIDS foundation. Yeah, there was one that I found that similarly amusing. In July 2013, Jennifer Lopez travelled to Turkmenistan for a private gig for the Turkmenistani president. Lopez was paid between $1 million and $1.5 million 
Australian, depending on the report you see for her three-song show. Surely she didn't have the husband to do Jenny from the Block. <laughs> yeah. She is, but, she, you know, she's still Jenny from the Block even when she's in Turkmenistan being paid 1.5 million. Uh, <laughs> but in, in attempting to tidy up the event, Lopez's publicist later clarified that the event had actually been organised by China National Petroleum Corporation and the, the event wasn't political in nature. I'm like, that's not much better. <laughs> when the China National Petroleum Foundation is your fig leaf, you're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tomorrow. At one point, the manager had to wield a baseball bat to fend off a mob of desperate parents. <laughs> Ditch the ads and get a Sunday episode when you join Club Retrospectors. Patreon.com slash Retrospectors. Hello, I'm Vaskar Sadulu, and I host the How To Academy podcast, a bi-weekly show exploring big ideas to transform our lives and the world. Our guests include Arthur Brooks on careers, Ruby Wax on mental health, Gabor Mate on trauma, Nicole Lepera on healing your relationships, and many more. You'll also hear from iconic artists, politicians, and activists, including Naomi Klein, Gordon Brown, Anna Funder, and a whole host of other very impressive people. That's the How To Academy podcast, available bi-weekly wherever you listen.